friends, welcome to this week's landscape photography vlog, and this time we're in Point Reyes, California. In this video I share the biggest mistake that I made early on as a photographer, and how correcting it allowed me to enjoy photography more and fully express my creativity. We also capture some images of this incredible coastline. Really hope you enjoy the video. That is just spectacular. Right now I'm at a sweeping vista that's showcasing just this endless display of waves. Just check that out. And you can see what I mean there, how it just sort of fades off into this mist in the horizon. It's very surreal. It, it, it almost looks like I photoshopped in like a, <laughs> a bit of fog out there in the distance. The waves right now are really powerful. As you can see here, they're just coming in into the uh, shore. And I love that pattern where the water meets the land and you get this just stark edge between the waves and the sand. Look at that as I zoom in to 400 millimeters. And just kind of look down this coast. I'm uncertain if, if a short shutter speed is the way to go or a long shutter speed. I was up the hill and it was like 30 mile per hour wind, so there wasn't even a, an ability to do long exposures, but I've sort of found this little pocket where the wind is calm enough to where I think I can, I can do some long exposures. Let's see here, let's do, try our shorter exposure. I'm gonna start out at 100 millimeters here and just kind of get a nice overall shot in the distance. Honestly, the settings don't matter that much. I'm, I'm probably just going to do F8, ISO 100, and then looks like shutter speed 1, 1 25th is probably fine. So here's my first image, just a very simple composition of this coastline. I love where the water meets the shoreline and you get those beautiful patterns. And I wanted to put that right in the center of the photograph because if you look at the way the waves are moving and the way the coastline moves it has a really nice symmetrical look to it and I felt like that haze in the distance really added a lot of nice atmosphere to the photograph. After taking this one I decided to be a little bit more creative and play around and I shifted to 400 millimeters to really focus in on just the waves and here's my shot. So this image was right up my alley. I love the abstraction here and just focusing in on the very simple patterns of all those waves coming in out in the distance. Shooting all of these images made me remember the first time I ever visited Point Reyes back in 2013. And on that trip, I learned an incredibly valuable lesson about photography. All right. So I'll tell you the little story while I take this picture. So. I was here, Point Reyes, it was my first time here, and I was right up the hill. I was up on one of these other hills. Yeah, sunset looked like it was gonna be really nice. I mean, I, I thought, oh, I'm gonna try Point Reyes, and I knew that, okay, you know, I'm cutting it pretty close. I'm like, not sure exactly where I need to shoot or where to go. I knew that there was the lighthouse here and some other stuff, but I just tried a random cliff and uh, yeah, I, I got over to one of those spots over there, ran out to the cliffs, and the light was already starting to, to catch the clouds, and I started just snapping pictures. Just, I, I showed up, I ran to the spot, and just started clicking the exposures as the clouds were lighting up. And uh, well, I got back to Lightroom and realized not a single one of those images was compelling. I can tell you what those images had. Very compelling light. But beyond having really compelling light, the images had nothing else. There was no structure to the composition. There was no thought process behind the image. I mean, it looked like what it was. It was, I showed up to the spot and just started clicking random pictures. And yeah, ever since then, that was, I think, 2013. Yeah, I've, I've tried to not let that happen anymore to the point where I, if I know I don't have enough time to, to really shoot a spot, then I, I save that spot or I pick another spot. And, you know, with a place like this, you know, I can spend hours 
just relaxing, observing, and, and I always, when I do that, come away with, with better photographs. This has been the case with most photo shoots I've had over the years. I found that the times I've been the most frustrated with my photography are the times where I was rushing, or the times where I really didn't get to know the landscape that I was photographing. And it's times like this where you're just sitting down for hours, playing around with different techniques, exploring your creativity, that you realize how valuable that extra time actually is. And since I did have the extra time, I pulled out my film camera, and here's my shot. So this image was captured with Portra 400, which is probably my favorite film to use. I really like the way the colors come out with this film, and my Nikon FE camera. I've been trying to do a bit of film for most of my photo shoots just to have a different look to the image and compare them to the digital. And I will say I love the way the colors came out here, the different textures that the film provides, and the bits of film grain in there as well. So. Uh, I've got the ND64 here, and then this one's actually a CPL, which I think might look really nice here. Every time I put on a filter, I wanna try a super long exposure, like a 30 second, but I found that most of the time when I do the really long exposures, I'm not very pleased with the way they look. And I think the reason for that is the longer the exposure gets, or if it gets too long, um, you lose a lot of the structure of the motion, so it just, blurs everything and I feel like for this I don't want to completely blur out the waves I just want a little bit of blur a little bit of that motion so I'm thinking maybe one to two seconds might be perfect for this So here's that one second exposure, and I do like the addition of the motion in the waves, but I didn't feel like it was quite enough to make an interesting photograph. So I decided to play around a bit more with different shutter speeds and different focal lengths. I love the pattern that the waves creates. You get almost like this, these sideways like waveforms or something. They're so cool. I really liked the way this simple composition came out. This was actually a 15 second exposure. I thought that maybe a 15 second exposure would be a bit too long, but it worked really well for the look that I was going for in this specific composition. I love the simplicity here, really just boiling everything down to the shapes and colors and removing some of the context from the photograph. So here's my final long exposure from this shot, this time a 10 second exposure, which I felt like worked really well for this composition. This image wasn't a single exposure, this was a panorama. So I did three images side by side to get a more wide perspective on the shoreline and really see those diagonal patterns that lead you towards the top of the image. And I really can't stress how important it was to have this extra time to play around with the different techniques, try new things, even if I didn't know if they would work or not. But overall, I'm really happy with some of the stuff that I captured at the spot. I think I'm gonna move to a different spot. Let's go see if we can find something else for sunset. So before I started recording this vlog, I was actually in Point Reyes for a good three or four hours, just kind of hiking around, looking at stuff, scouting, and I checked out three or four different trails. One of them with these craggly sea stacks ended up being my favorite, and I knew that I'd want to shoot sunset there. So I checked Photopills, which is my favorite app for checking sun alignments, and I noticed it would be perfect for when the sun hit that horizon. So I decided to trek back there, and sure enough, as that sun dipped down, it created this incredible glow off the cliff. I'm gonna show you what the uh, composition looks like in here. I'm trying to shield the uh, mic from the winds. It, that's just incredible. So that's at about 16.
So here's a panorama, this time using four vertical images, because I wanted to show that right side where you can really tell that you're on this thin peninsula. The only problem with this composition is I felt like it would benefit from some different conditions, like maybe different clouds in the sky, some texture up there, and even more powerful waves. The waves at this specific spot were very mellow felt like some of that action would have really helped here. But overall, some beautiful light, and it was nice to at least try this composition, and I think it gives me something to work on and look forward to the next time I visit the spot. After shooting this one, I decided to zoom in and focus on just the cliffs and the sun out there. Here's one more image. This one was probably my favorite from this specific spot. If I'm being honest, I really didn't know if any of these images were going to come out. It was super windy and I was trying to do multiple exposures for the sun and I just wasn't sure if it was going to work out. But I really liked the way this one ended up looking. Beautiful sunset, but it was so windy I couldn't really, <laughs> couldn't really vlog it. But uh, I did a variation of handheld shots at 35 and and a 16. I'm, I'm really not sure if they're gonna they're gonna turn out. I think I, I might like the images from before a little bit better. So overall just such a fun day out capturing photography and hiking around and I just want to mention again how important it is to take the extra time. I feel like in order to create compelling landscape photography that really tells a story of that landscape we need to get to know that landscape and in turn you're gonna come away with better images you're going to be more creative, and in my opinion, you're going to have more fun. So if you can take a whole day to explore one location that you haven't been, definitely take the extra time. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.